All right, hey guys, OFD checking in here and happy Friday. Guys, I wanted to just bring a couple of my uh, favorite watches, favorite Rolex watches to the table here today and just talk a little bit about them. I've, what I've got here is the uh, 16750. This is a transitional Rolex from about 1984. It's an 8.2 million serial number, so I believe that's around 8, 1984. And what we have here is the 16570, the Rolex Explorer 2. This is a nine, uh, excuse me, a 2002 model. So I just wanted to kind of look at these two watches, uh, GMT watches from Rolex. As far as Rolex watches go, the GMTs are really kind of my favorite watches out there. I've never been a really big fan of the Submariner watch. It's a great watch, don't get me wrong, but I just, there's something about the Rolex, um, the Explorer line and the GMT line that really, you know, have me enraptured. I really love these watches, probably because this particular uh, 16750, this watch was actually purchased by my father back in the 1980s. I was with him when he bought it. Believe it or not, he paid uh, right around $800 and some tax for this watch. So pretty amazing that, you know, if you know what these watches are going for these days, um, it's quite an amazing deal. And it really does go to show that not only do Rolex watches hold their value, but they really, really increase in value over the years. Now, the 16750, this one is considered a transitional model. It was uh, from the 1675, which ran from the 1960s until the, I do believe, the late 1970s. I, I think 79 or 80 is when they came out with the 16750. 750 uh, might have even been later than that but uh, this is an 84 model as you guys can tell this is a matte dial model what i mean by that is the dial itself and i'm going to bring up here a little bit closer so you guys can see but it is actually a matte dial and you can see the indices on this watch are not applied they're painted on it makes it a pretty neat watch because it mimics the original 1675 and around 1985 they did start moving to the um the the polished or the shiny uh, dials on the watches that did have applied indices. A lot of those earlier models, um, I guess Rolex wasn't quite ready to make that move and they actually developed spider, what they called the spider web cracks in the dial in those original gloss dials like that. But these matte dials are really neat and it's nice because through the years as people got these watches serviced, it was really a big deal back then to kind of replace the dial, put in the fancier, you know, the, um, the, the, uh, what do you want to call it? The gloss dial with the applied indices. It just made a lot more sense for people. Uh, you know, luckily my father over the years, he did have this watch service, but he did never have, uh, or did never have the dial replaced. So there's an original matte dial, um, 16750. So I think that's a really, really neat thing. Um, there's a family watch. This watch will stay in my family forever. But as you can see, it's incredibly, incredibly clean. My dad uh, wore this watch quite a bit, but he did wear it under a cuff pretty much all the time. So um, it's very clean. I'm sure at one point while well, they've done, you know, some of the upgrade or some of the cleaning work, they did a, maybe a slight bit of polishing to it, but you can see some little, some little dings and scratches in the case there. And this is indicative of a used watch. You should really see, you know, some marks on a used Rolex watch that you have over the years. You can see the signed crown, but really, really cool watches. Now, if you know the Rolex, the original GMTs like this, these were designed for, um, you know, pilots, Pan Am, they were originally developed in the 1950s, I think 1955 in collaboration with Pan Am for pilots. Uh, the bezel indicates the day and night, as you can see here, the blue and the red, that's to indicate day and, day and night for the 24 hour time. This, uh, they did move up to the 3075 movement in these watches, which was a, a bit of an improvement. You came from the 1575, that was a 19,800 vibrations per hour movement with the 3075, you came into a, high, a true high beat movement at 28,800 vibrations per hour, which was kind of nice. It also had the quick, quick, set, quick set date function, um, so you could actually set that date quickly there as you roll that hour hand around, um, which is pretty neat. And, and immediately at midnight, you get a snap and it changes the date immediately. It's not a slow rollover. So that was an improvement they made from the 1675. And another one was the cases uh, became 100 meters water resistant as opposed to 50 meters water resistance. So it really became a, a better watch in my opinion. Um, I do think the 1675 is still a little bit more popular, but I think these transitional models over the years will become more popular. So it's a great, great looking watch. Obviously this one is in incredible shape. And I wanna bring up the 16570 to show these two watches side by side. Like I said, I'm a big, big fan of the Rolex GMTs. And I think it's really impressive. You guys can see uh, these watches are very different, but very similar. Now you do have a, a bi-directional bezel on the um, GMT Master. Uh, this is a fixed bezel, but really looking at the handset, the, the, the dial layout, everything is just really so similar on these watches. And it, 
And it just it says something about the tradition that Rolex carries over through the years and years with their watches. You can see the, the GMT hands are pretty much the same. I do think maybe on the Explorer 2, it's got a little bit bigger of an arrow hand there, but really not a whole lot different going on. Now, this is a, a 2002 model of the Rolex Explorer 2. Uh, these had a really, really great run, these watches. I do believe it was right around 20 years. They discontinued these in 2011. So these watches are, uh, they're out there. The price is going up on them. A few years ago, you could find one of these for around $3,500. Now they're getting closer to 6,000 on the pre-owned market out there. So this is, this particular model, a 2002 model is running the 3085 movement. So it is a true high beat movement uh, from Seiko. It's got 50 hours of power reserve. Uh, they moved up to the 3086 in some of the later models on these, but uh, the 3085 is a, just a workhorse of a movement and a really, really great movement from Rolex watch. And I just, something about the watches, and it's pretty impressive too, is looking at the straps on the watches. Now, of course, this one is from the 80s. This one is from the early 2000s, but you can look at the, they're basically the same. Again, they've carried that tradition over. Now, this is a screw link bracelet where there's a push pin bracelet. So big difference there on the bracelet themselves. This one has solid in links. This one is hollow in links because it's from the 1980s. So flip it over and show you that there, whereas the Explorer 2 actually has the the solid in links there, but really, really uh, great watches. Now, I do think we're going to see the prices on the Explore 2s continue to rise. Um, now that they've been discontinued, they've gone to the 216570, uh, which is a 42 millimeter version of the watch. And a lot of people feel that that might be a little bit big. I think it's a great looking watch. And it does harken back to the original Explorers, the original Explorer. Um, two when they came out with the big orange hand. So it looks a lot more like that and does have that polar dial, which is really impressive. So guys, great watch. So I'm gonna pause it for just a second. We'll get each one of these on my seven inch wrist. And uh, we're not gonna go out with a loom shot because this one here is really pretty old. This is original loom on the watch. Like I said, the dial's not been replaced. Now you can see there's hardly any patina, uh, very, very slight. You can see just very slight kind of patina going on on that dial, but you know, there's no glow left in it at all. This is Super Luminova here on the GM, I mean the Explorer 2, so it definitely still glows. But let's go ahead and get the watches both on my seven inch wrist and see what they look like. Okay, so the classic, the Rolex GMT Master. Now this is a standard GMT Master, not the GMT Master 2, the more modern versions, but really, really beautiful watch. A heirloom watch, I do believe. This is a like I said, a family watch that's really never going to go anywhere outside of the family, but it's a very, very impressive piece, something I really love. And it's classic. If you look over at one of these on somebody's wrist, you know exactly what they're wearing. Um, you know, they, it just screams Rolex, so pretty cool. Let's get the Explorer 2 on the wrist. And here we have the Explorer 2 on the wrist. I will note that I do feel a, a difference in the bracelet. I think it's the the solidness of the links, obviously the solid in links. You do have a fold over clasp assembly on the Explorer 2. That was an upgrade to the original clasp they had on the GMT Master. But you know, this was more designed as an adventure watch where the GMT Master, like I said, was designed as a pilot's watch. So Really, really great watches from Rolex, guys. If you're ever interested in a Rolex GMT, I would say buy them up while the prices are affordable. And I will also tell you to buy the best example you can afford. Don't go looking for a deal. Don't go looking for a super steal and a bargain because usually what you get is a watch that's been, uh, you know, Frankenstein a bit or it's had new parts put in it, different parts put in it, maybe new bezel inserts and whatnot. This is all original. Um, luckily, my dad kept it under a shirt sleeve, so we never had any fading at all of the bezel or anything like that. So it's just a really impressive piece. And I would suggest that if you do go hunting for a Rolex, get the best example that you can actually afford. And that doesn't mean the cleanest, because the cleanest might have been over polished or anything like that. But if you're out looking, guys, that's just my advice. So, all right, guys, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up down there at the bottom. And if you've not subscribed to the OFD channel yet, please do. Please do. Thanks, guys.